fellow Diamond Painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today to de-kit and show you the finish of my hummingbird kit that I ordered from Amazon, and I will stick a picture of the image over there. So, so happy with the way that it turned out, uh, and it was a fun kit. It was something nice to work on in between, working some other stuff. I got to feel like I finished something, which is always a win. And now I get to do this. So it is a small painting. It is only a 30 by 30, but uh, it still was fun. It took me about seven hours to finish and it was a full round, not a partial. That's why it took me so long. Uh, let's see, where am I starting? I'm starting at 158. Let me get some of these out of here so I can Have room to pull all of these okay and then I'll pull some more out as I go so I've gotten my little new storage out this is actually the first time that I'm going to be de-kitting um, my rounds since I changed everything so I'm kind of excited about that um, Lots of stuff going on. If I ramble today, guys, I apologize. I have so many things running around in my brain today. And do you ever just have one of those days where you just have so many questions that you're like, where do I even start? Yeah, that's kind of the day I'm having. So anyway, I did enjoy this kit. Like I said, it was you know, small and it was pretty simple. It's that stained glass kind of mosaic style that I like. Um, so I enjoyed that part of it and I think it turned out really well. So I'm really happy with it, but man, I was working on it yesterday and clumsy me. I don't even know what I did. I'm sitting there diamond painting out of the tray. I had just dumped a color into the tray and I was on the last little sections of it and so I I don't don't even know what I was doing I don't know if I was reaching for something I don't know if I I don't know what I did the upshot of it is that I um, basically hit the tray with the back of my hand and drills went flying everywhere. Luckily, I was sitting at the dining room table, so they all fell on the dining room floor, which is a wood floor, so it was a hard surface, so it wasn't carpet. Luckily, they were purple drills, so they were, well, probably would have actually been easier to see them if they had been on carpet, because my carpet is kind of a light color. On the dark wood floor in the dining room. They were under the table, so it was kind of hard to see. So I'm literally under there with a stinking flashlight trying to, what am I looking for? 519, trying to find all of these drills so I can sweep them up. And just, oh, it was just a big mess. And then I was afraid because I had poured out quite a few to finish up the last sections that I needed with that color. I'm like, oh no, does this mean I'm not going to have enough drills to finish? Because I had almost no drills left in the container. So I'm like brushing them up into my dustpan and then like waiting to see how many I have left and if I'm going to be able to get through, you know, the, the remaining part that I have left with the drills that haven't been on the floor. <laughs> and amazingly, I did manage it. And it was this color, 550. So I knew that I would have, you know, plenty of drills in my spares if I needed them. But and I actually managed to finish and I still had this many drills left. So not a huge amount because there were quite a few that just went in the trash. Once I realized I had enough left in the, the container, 
to finish. I just threw the rest of them in the trash because trying to sort them out from all the other stuff that was on the dining room floor just wasn't going to happen. So, but yeah, like I'm just sitting there and I went to move my hand and all of a sudden, boom, just drills everywhere. So, and then I got up this morning because I thought I was going to go for a walk with my son. Usually if we're not going to go, he will tell me the night before that he doesn't want to go. And he struggles with insomnia sometimes. And so I try not to, you know, wake him unless I absolutely have to, because I never know if he's, you know, only gotten two hours of sleep or if he's just gone to sleep and I'm waking him up. So I thought I was going to go walking with him this morning. I didn't. And then I got called in to sub for work and then I got told, never mind. So it's been kind of a roller coaster day already and it's still pretty early. So I don't know how, if that bodes well for the rest of my day, we'll see how it goes. Okay, 680. I did really enjoy this kit, I gotta say. I don't know if it was just because it was smaller and being able to do it after working on so many large ones, but yeah, I did enjoy it. And I'm also enjoying my new storage. Okay, I jumped all the way to 807. Okay. And I'm actually really liking the um, round ones because I managed to fit all of these in one box and I still have a little bit of room. Now, again, for the round ones, I did not purchase the art dot spares like I was going to for rounds. Once I did them for the squares, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this again for rounds. And I'm kind of glad I didn't at this point because I don't know if I would have been able to fit all of them in um, one container, one box like I have if I had, oh my gosh, you guys, <sighs> it's going to be one of those days for me. Just, just, I can tell. It's going to be one of those days. Maybe I shouldn't diamond paint today. Maybe I should just do something else that isn't going to require much brain power because apparently I don't have a lot today. Oh. Okay. So I didn't get to go on my work, regular walk with my son. I did go walk on our elliptical. I'm still trying to kind of get my knee back into the shape that it needs to be. I've been taking some of the advice that the surgeon gave my husband, um, but while I'm, my pain is reduced, I'm still, I don't feel like my function is much better. But I mean, my pain is reduced, so I guess I'm, I won't complain about that, right? At least it doesn't hurt as much. But now I'm afraid that maybe because it doesn't hurt as much, I'm going to overuse it before it chance, has a chance to really heal. I'm also, I, I guess I just need to call my doctor and make another appointment. You know, the surgeon basically told me that I had bursitis and then sent me on my merry way, but didn't really give me any kind of instructions <laughs> for how to deal with that. So maybe I just need to go see my regular doctor and be like, Hey, what's up? What do I do here? I know some people have to go on medication for it. I would prefer not to do that if I can help it. But at this point, 
you know, if there is a medicine that will give me some functionality back, maybe that's what I need to do, at least for the short term. So, I don't know. My husband goes for his first PT appointment tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. And things just feel kind of crazy right now, and I'm not really sure why. I think maybe it's because we just have, a, oh, I didn't have any of these, have a lot of things going on. You know, we're getting close to the end of school, which is good. I'm ready for, I'm ready for summer. But I think also for me, it's difficult because I know I'm not going back next year. At least, you know, what I'm doing now, I may go back as a sub, but I'm not going to be going back as a regular classroom teacher. And so that's difficult. And we just have so many kind of irons in the fire that we're not really sure what to do. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, we, we need to make a decision sooner than later, but there's so many what ifs that I will drive myself crazy before we get a decision made. So, yeah. So, and I have other questions that have come up. You know, we've been talking about our move to Canada and we've had some issues arise that we don't know if that means we need to put it off or if we need to do it sooner than we really had intended. Um, so we have the opportunity to move to Maine. And this is something that we had discussed before, but we were kind of focused on at that point getting into Canada. And since we have been doing research and stuff, there's just so many factors that we didn't even think about. Um, you know, I'm trying to grow the YouTube channel and do some other things and things like that. And moving countries in the middle of doing that, I'm, I'm not even sure if that's possible. <laughs> I was looking today because like surely the situation has happened that, you know, someone started a YouTube channel living in one country and then moved to another country. So how exactly does that work? And no one seems to know because I've, I've seen stuff on the internet from people that said, oh, I did it with no problem. Here's how you do it. And then I have other people who are like, but it says right here, you're not allowed to do that. And some of it may depend on what country you're from. Some of it may depend on what country you're going to. So that can get complicated. And then looking at our tax situation, because for those of you who are unaware, as a U.S. citizen, it does not matter where you live in the world, the U.S. taxes any income that you make. They are one of only two countries in the world that do that. Every other country, including Canada, does not care about your income if you don't live in Canada. So for instance, that was another big thing this week. I had to mail our taxes. We got our federal refund. We didn't get audited. So yay. Yay. Uh, I mean, I guess getting our refund doesn't preclude an audit, but I would assume we're not getting audited since we got our refund. Um, and if that don't, don't tell me any different. That's my happy bubble. I'm going to live in. That means I'm not, it's not happening. Um, however, if, uh, yeah, I, I had to mail my state taxes. I was not happy about that, but whatever. And I'm pretty sure we owed enough because 
we lost the dependent this year and didn't realize that was going to happen, that I'm fairly certain we're also going to get told that we have to prepay some state tax for next year, which is going to irritate me. Ooh, those are two wildly different colors. I think that's the first one of, of this one that I've had that's two different colors like that. Anyway, so there's that tax situation. And then 3768. Um, my husband is a dual citizen. So as a Canadian citizen living here in the U.S., Canada didn't care what his income was here because he doesn't live in Canada. If we move to Canada, however, then all of our income has to be reported to both places. And that, yeah, because the U.S. And 37.87, can't keep my number straight, 37.87, okay. Um, so that makes our tax situation a whole lot more complicated. Now, again, I'm sure there are other people in the same boat. And, you know, that's one of the things, one of the reasons we had talked about moving to Maine in the interim in the first place was because there are several places in Maine, because it's so close to the Canadian border, that people live in one place, work in the other, or vice versa. You know, live in Canada, but work in the U.S., or live in the U.S., but work in Canada, whatever. And so we figured, oh, well, there will be people up there you know, tax experts up there who have uh, experience in dealing with having to file in both places. And but it just seems like a really big headache. There's so many rules, of course, and, you know, trying to keep track of what the U.S. government is doing and making sure that you're following all the rules can just sounds like it might be a real nightmare. So now we're trying to decide if we want to just hold off on our move to Canada and move to Maine for a while. Um, oh, that's 38.12, not 38.21. No wonder those were such different colors. 38.21. I don't know why I'm having so many problems with numbers today. The kicker is my, my oldest wants to stay here. She has no interest in moving someplace cold. She wants to move someplace warmer. So she's looking south. My youngest wants to go with us. He wants to move someplace colder. But if we don't go, we only have until he turns 22 because we can take him with a dependent because he's still living with us and going to school, we can take him as a dependent. Once he turns 22, then my husband and I can't do anything for him. He has to apply on his own and that just makes it that much more difficult, you know. But he's so young, I don't know if he knows what he wants at this point. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, am I being a helicopter mom because I'm trying to give him options that he didn't even ask for? And of course, all of these changes and reconsiderations coming on the heels of, I finally finished all of our paperwork. So, I mean, we were literally to the point of, okay, now we need to start looking at where do we send all of this? Where do we send our fees? How, what, you know, what are the next steps? And now we're like, uh, you know, we have these, this other opportunity and trying to figure out what to do. Yeah. My brain is just in a tailspin at the moment. Okay. That was my last one. So there's all of my drills emptied and put away so I can put my case away. Um, let me move this out of the way and let me put my spare drills away and then I will be right back to show you the canvas and my trash. So don't go anywhere. 
Okay, so here you can see my logbook. I haven't printed out my photo yet for this. I did print a photo, but it was too big, so I need to shrink it down some. So like I said, it's a 30 by 30. It was a full round, 35 colors, poured glue. Uh, I got it on the 21st. It came on the 19th. I started it on the 8th and I finished it on the 11th and it was $11.99. And this is one that I got from Amazon, like I said. And it took me seven hours and 16 minutes. And ta-da, here it is. So I think it turned out really well. I'm actually really happy with it. Uh, as I was doing it, I didn't know if I was going to like, you know, these sections where basically it's kind of checkerboard pattern, but I think it turned out well. And it's one of those where it looks even better from a distance. So I'm actually really happy with it. The drills were nice. The symbols were nice and clear. So I didn't have any problems with that. And let me bring this up a little closer so you can see. And yeah, such a nice canvas after all those popping drills that I was dealing with from Huacan. So let me uh, move this off to the side and I'm going to show you my trash. And then I will uh, show you how I'm going to store this because I'm not framing it. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I didn't have a ton of trash, which is not a surprise. It's not a very big canvas. I did have a couple of drills like this one and that one and this one over here where they had some um, tabs on them. This one has a tab. There were some that were, you know, little, not fully formed pieces. Some of my trash again ends up being like stowaways where they were in, you know, like this pink might have been in the purple and I just put it in my trash because I'm not going to waste time going back and matching it up or whatever. So yeah, not a huge amount of trash. So these are going to go in my trash drills and you can still see a lot of my flamingo drills in there. Still looking for a new flamingo kit because I want to try another one. So there was the trash. And then what I do for mine when I finish mine off, and I know I've told you guys this before, but it's been a while since I actually did one on camera. So all I do is I go around and cut at the edges and I try to cut on a little bit of an angle um, because I want to get rid of as much of the white part of the canvas as I can. So I'm trying to cut on that black line, that black outline of the canvas because I'm going to be putting this on black uh, cardstock. So if I miss any of the white, it will show. And you know, I mean, I'm not going to be super fussy about it. I just try to do the best that I can. I mean, ultimately for these kinds of paintings, the only person, you know, who's really going to be looking at them as me. Um, I do occasionally when people ask, you know, I might get one out and flip through it to show people, you know, kind of what, what is diamond painting and, you know, some of the things I've done and stuff like that. But really, it's more for me. It's just a place for me to kind of store them and, you know, look back and, and be like, oh, look, I did that. Now, my little ones, I don't mind doing this with and just having them hang around when they're small. I'm still trying to figure out. I feel guilty when I have my bigger ones that I've done. Because I, you know, some of them I don't ever plan to hang. I just bought them because I wanted the fun of doing them. But I feel like they're going to waste just kind of laying in my portfolio. And I've thought about framing them and selling them, but that seems, you know, cost prohibitive. And I don't really go to like craft fairs and stuff. I've seen some people who've said that they've sold theirs on Etsy. So then this part I just throw away. And then I get out my double sided tape and I have my big piece of cardstock. This is basically an 11 by 17 piece of cardstock. Now, this is going to fit in the middle of it, and I just kind of eyeball the middle. I was hoping I could get two on here, but unless the other one was really small, there's not enough room to put two 30 by 30s on here. So I'm just going to kind of center it by eyeball. And then I have a roll of double-sided tape that I purchased and I just flip it over 
and then I'm going to put the double-sided tape on the back of this and then once I get it centered I will pull it off and place it so anyway I don't I'm not the kind of person that really goes to craft fairs or that kind of thing um, you know I've considered trying to put them on like Etsy but again my whole thing with that is I feel like it's going to be cost prohibitive to sell them that way um, and also I'd have to seal them and I don't I don't really know can you roll them up after you seal them I don't know I think I haven't tried it maybe that's an experiment for me I do have a couple downstairs that I finished that I have sealed I should try rolling them up and see what happens because my thing with selling them is you know I could sell them rolled up finished speaking of that tangent I've always been told that you should roll the canvas with your drill side out but I have seen at least two commercials from one from a diamond painting company and one from well, I think it was also a diamond painting company, but like a Chinese company, and they showed them rolled drills in. So now I'm curious, has anybody tried doing it drills in and does it really make a difference? I mean, it makes more sense that you would do it drills out, but what do I know? So anyway, back to my main point. Um, I, what was I talking about? Oh, selling them on Etsy. I don't know if that makes any sense. You know, if I could roll them up, my worry is that drills would fall off and then people would be upset. Like, can you get away with just being like, this is as is, if stuff has fallen off when it gets to you, too bad, so sad. I mean, it's not like I could replace it, so. And I mean, I maybe could send replacement drills, but, you know, I don't want to keep my drills according to which painting or extras or whatever. I mean, I guess I could if I was going to sell them, but like for the ones that I already have done, I, I didn't. So I don't have those to, to send. So like, you know, do a kit and then just keep all of the spares with the kit until it sells, which I could do, but that seems like a lot of extra work as well. So don't know that I would do that either. So does anybody sell them? How, how does that work for you? If you sell them, yeah, how does that work? Or do you have other suggestions for what to do with finished ones? Now, like I said, for these small ones, I'm perfectly fine doing it like this and putting them in my portfolio. I don't have, they're small, so they don't take up much room. But you know, like my Vibrant Italy, my Grandiose Grease, my Good Witch, all of those really big ones that I did are just kind of stacked up gathering dust. I mean, they're not gathering dust because I have them in a portfolio, so they're clean, but yeah, still feeling guilty that I have a lot of them kind of hanging around and I haven't really done anything with them. So maybe I just need to frame them and find someone to gift them to. I don't know if I have enough people in my life that would like that many diamond paintings though. So anyway, here we go. That was the process for putting the double-sided tape on there. I got it on there, so now it's nice and stuck. And then I can just stick it in my portfolio book. And I have this nice display. And I don't seal mine before I put them in my portfolio book because they're gonna be in the portfolio sleeve, so they're gonna be pretty protected. I go over all of my paintings with my marble rolling pin before I put them away to make sure that my drills are nice and pressed down, good and adhered. So I don't feel like I need to seal them. I've got um, kits that I did when I very first started diamond painting that I've kept that way and nothing has moved or come off in the sleeves or whatever. So um, I don't seal them, but it is nice to flip back through the book and look at the stuff that I've done. So, and to see, you know, kind of how, how my tastes and how my progress has evolved uh, over time. That would be an interesting thing to look at too, to go back after several years and see, if you can tell how your technique has progressed or whatever. Anyway, 
I'm getting off tangent again, sorry guys. So there was the D kit and finish of my hummingbird and now it's all ready to go uh, and be put in my portfolio book and I can move on to the next project. And I'm gonna try really hard to stop avoiding my dreamer designs and go work on that one. I'm gonna switch pens and see if that changes my outlook and feeling about that one. So I will have progress to report on that one soon, I hope. Thanks for joining me guys and sticking around through my incessant rambling and change of topics and all the tangents. I really do appreciate it. You have no idea how much uh, you all watching every video means to me. So thank you. If you like this video before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. Give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Hit the subscribe button. That helps me out even more. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching.